Welcome to Harry's Gym Chat. We're in my gym and we're going to chat. Now, is a podcast powered by USN. We've got some exclusive offers for you that we are going to be giving away a little later in the video. But at the same time, we are on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe. We're going to be talking about everything health and wealth and fitness, but also all things positive because I'm a positive guy. I'm a big guy. We're keeping it fun and friendly. So look, jump in, turn the volume up. And let's do this. What's happening people? Harry Double A here, your GB 100 meter sprinter. And guess what? We are on a podcast with myself and David Langsdale, a good friend of mine, obviously a little USN ambassador, um, bodybuilder who has a pro card, can I say? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is obviously someone that I'm excited to talk to. And I think it's uh, quite important that we, uh, you know, put the volume up, listen as intently as possible to what this amazing man has to say. David, how you doing? I'm very good, thank you. What, yeah. what an intro as well. So thank you very much for that. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. I mean, we're just scratching the surface. So look, are you excited to be here firstly? Of course. Yeah. We always have great chats, right? Yeah. So to be on here doing this with you. This is more of a, um, I would say, a less private chat because there's going to be a few people listening. So for the listeners out there who uh, may not know too much about yourself, let's, let's give them a little rundown. So you compete in bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah? What category? So I'm men's physique with the WMBF, so uh, the World Natural Bodybuilding Federation. And as you touched on there, just turned pro. So yeah, it's an exciting time. And what does that actually mean to turn pro? So now I basically go into the pro ranks. So there's prize money and you're up against the best, right? Well, you're a big baller best. now, yeah, big baller. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to think so. Yeah, getting out those little coins. But so look, so in a certain sense, when you turn pro, what does that mean to you? Like, let's say, for example, someone just wants to start bodybuilding right now how long is that going to take them and what's the process involved in that i feel like it's going to be different from person to person because bodybuilding is is a genetic sport so some people will have a different starting point to others so in terms of the time it would take for someone to turn pro could be a longer process based on their starting point especially in the natural bodybuilding world you know everything's down to training diet recovery and just learning to master those basics so it can take as long as it needs to, and you just have to be patient along the way. All right, so let's talk about how patient you've been. Tell us a little bit more about where you started, how you started, and how you've ended up where you are. So I started off playing football as a young lad, and believe it or not, I was actually a goalkeeper. So, <laughs> yeah. So Bear in mind, look, we're, we're, we're similar height, right? Yeah. So I'm like 181. I, I wish I was close to that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very much way below the six-foot mark. <laughs> yeah. So... Being a goalkeeper, that's not ideal, right? So the first thing I needed to do, I can't make myself grow any taller. So I was like, right, I need to get in the gym and create a little bit more presence for myself. Um, so that's where my journey started in the gym, from the footballing background, wanting to do the plyometrics, wanting to build the broader shoulders. And then it was later on down the line when I got a bad knee injury that I couldn't play football but I've grown this passion for the gym that then I started to get more and more into the bodybuilding. And obviously, like you've just touched on, you're a natural athlete. Now, you know, we're going to hit this, hit this topic quite early on. You know, the bodybuilding world, people do take, you know, some yep. form of performance in hearts and drugs. Um, and obviously you've taken the conscious decision to yep. stay natural. Now, firstly, I'm going to ask you why you've um, decided to stay in that category. And then we'll, Secondly to that is how difficult is it for you as a natural bodybuilder to prove that point? So first of all, for me personally, like I say, I came from a football background. So it was never about like, how quick can I get from A to B? I was just looking at myself and I wasn't going to be competing against other people. It was just like, right, here's my start point. I want to get a little bit bigger. So there was no quick fix to that. I was just comparing myself to how I wanted to get. So, and also back then, social media wasn't as prominent as it is now. <laughs> so it wasn't on the palm of my hand every day on my phone, looking at other people thinking I need to get that, like that as quick as possible. So from that, it was just a slow, constant progression. And then when I went into bodybuilding, obviously, like you say, mm. it, it is quite prominent. But for me personally, if I'm just comparing to myself, then I just want the next step. And when you do your research into this stuff and you see the negative side effects and all the rest, 
and I've learned over the years what I can actually achieve naturally if I apply myself fully to it. Yeah, for me personally, the 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 negative side effects just are not worth it for me. It was literally like, I want to go down this route. I want to be natural. And now I've come this far, I want to show other people that it can be done. Yeah, no, you're an advocate for it. I can see the passion in your face, <laughs> literally. It's like, you're sat there talking and I can I, I can feel it. Yeah. Um, I mean, from my, from my own experience, what I often find is <laughs> the amount of Reddit pages that I've seen on myself where people will say, oh, this guy's on juice. He does this, he does that. And I mean, everyone has choices in life. They can do what they want to do. But obviously I take part in an Olympic sport where I do actually get regularly drug tested. And throughout my whole life, I remember getting my first drug test when I was like 16. Something that I've always struggled with is proving the point that I've yeah. you know, not failed any drug tests and I haven't taken any performance enhancing drug. How do you make a point of you know, letting people know that you are where you are because of what the decisions that you've chosen. So exactly the same. We'll get regularly drug tested. So that'll be urine samples. It's lie detector tests. So Ooh, that's a new one. Yeah. So we've had a little to, lie detector yeah, test. Yeah. So um, <laughs> quite a funny story behind that as well. Bef the night before the competition, you're doing that and you're doing this polygraph and you've got you're chained up and everything. You've got heart rate mon. You've got sorry blood pressure monitors on. And you just sat there on a chair and it's like, yeah, you feel feel a bit under pressure. And it's Love like, I did this. sign up for this, but it's what you got to do, right? So, yeah, the regular drug testing is obviously massive as well. Yeah, that, that's news to me. I would not have thought that at all. Yeah. I think we need to bring that into like the, was it, WADA? <laughs> yeah. We need to bring that in over there yeah. because like something that's so embarrassing for me as, as an athlete that does get regularly drug tested, it's, you know, you could be chilling at home, doing whatever you want. So from the athletics perspective... Uh, we have, let's say, we have a calendar that you have to fill out. You give one hour every day where someone can just turn up at your house or turn up whatever location that you give them and they can drug test you. Now, in most circumstances, it tends to be in the morning, but they can also turn up whenever they want. There's been times where I'm playing FIFA, I'm doing this, <laughs> I'm doing that. And then what comes worse to it is a point of you do have to show them everything. They've got to see where the urine is coming from. Yeah. So then when I get all these people telling me, look, Harry, yeah, look, you're traps. You're definitely on something. You're this, you're definitely on something. It, it takes away, it strips away a lot of my pride and passion for what I do. And I mean, for you in that category, are there ever times where you thought, oh, what's the point? Why not go the other way? No, definitely not. Because like going back to my original point, it's from my personal decision. I don't want them negative effects and when people do their research into the side effects that can be caused why would I want to do that I can get results naturally and be patient and work hard and get what I want out of it naturally so I'm not going to go any other that's way that's what we like to hear that's what we like to hear so on that basis though you've got to supplement yourself yeah so what is your nutrition and you know your diet plan what 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 is that routine looking like so it'll change throughout the year. So whether I'm looking to gain size or whether I'm looking to cut body fat for a competition, the amounts that I will eat will change. But what I eat pretty much stays the same. Mm -hmm. And going into the supplementation as well, I'll use the regular things, the protein powders, the creatine, the pre-workouts. Obviously, we've got to get that caffeine in. And I'm in a privileged position where I feel very lucky to have the support of USN. And now what I would say with their products especially I touched on the protein powders there. This is something I'm going to use year round, right? So if we've got high quality flavors, it digests well. If, if I can get that- You don't that want in. the protein parts, do you? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I want products that I can use year round and incorporate into my lifestyle. So if, yeah. they're, if they're convenient and they taste great, then we're onto a winner, So right? you touch on, obviously you touch on USN now. I, I've turned into a bit of a mixologist in yeah, okay. my time being at USN. You know, I'm mixing my creatine, my, you know, my anabolic muscle mass, all of this sort of stuff I'm mixing together. So are you taking your EAAs, your BCAs? Are you taking everything all at once? Are you, you know, stretching them out over a certain period of time? So quite straightforward. My protein powder is in two meals of the day to get my protein content higher. So one of them will be usually in the morning and one post-workout with that. In terms of the pre-workout, as it says, pre-workout straight before I train, 15, 20 minutes before. So that kicks in when I start my Love session. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then during my workout, I'll have the EAAs and the creatine mixed together. So that'll be while I'm cutting for a competition, while I'm looking to gain, we've, had, we've got some high quality gainers which have very good ingredients in, so I can up my carb content with those. So I've been using the whole food gainer through my off season as well. What about um, vitamin wise? Are you taking ZMA at all? Yes, Ashwagandha, I'm, anything like that? 
there you go, spot on those two. Before bed at night, work yeah. a treat. Yeah. Just calm me down, you know, and, and they can help. And again, th- these things become, I feel, more important for a natural bodybuilder mm. because you're gonna, these are the only things we can take are the natural supplements. So I'm going to make sure I get them in. All right, so with ZMA and myself, right, I get like the most vivid dreams. There's been times where I've actually dreamt I've run a time in a race and I've woken up mid-sleep and I've checked the internet and power of 10 ranking results to check if I've actually done that race. Have you had any mad dreams whilst being on ZMA? Not to that level, but I, <laughs> I would like to up get the dosage, them. Man. If, if it can help my visualization for how yeah. well I'm going to do in competition, yeah. then, then, then I want all the help I can get. So. Oh, mate. I, I think I've upped my dosage because I've had some <laughs> mad dreams on ZMA. <laughs> all right, so like you just said, talking about on stage, right? So... I compete in um, some very high level competitions I have done throughout my life. And most of the time, prep wise, people always ask me, what's your prep like? And the prep to me doesn't necessarily matter as much, you know, we're talking about that last week or into competition. I'm all about being in the moment. So, you know, I'm going to guess it's slightly different for yourself in terms of that last week being very vital before you get on stage. Yeah, it is because the diet is going to influence how we look going into a show. So the muscles want to be full of glycogen, so we need to carb load to make sure we've filled back out. Does that include some Haribo? Or? Um, <laughs> I don't usually go Haribo, I, but I could. Yeah. So some people like to get their sugars in before I usually go with honey myself. So okay. a little bit of squirt of honey in the mouth if I need it. You yeah, know? a little dollop. So, yeah, so getting what I need. Um, so yeah, that last, last week is vital and... That's something you learn more and more about over the years of competing as to what you need yourself personally. So then once you're then on stage, once you're then in the area, like I know you're going to get your spray tan. Is yep. that in the morning? Yep. So we'll do a spray tan the morning of the show, but also the day before the show. So cool. it's two layers. Trying to get my tone, yeah? Yeah, exactly. I you know definitely, I mean? yeah, on the pale side. So I look forward <laughs> to getting the tan. As much as it can feel a bit sticky on the skin, yeah. I, I, I like to get the tan the on the look. must be horrible after. Yeah, definitely. Like they especially the night before the competition, you can't shower it off. You end up sleeping in a bed and yeah, you've oh, destroyed many a hotel The hotels rooms. must know you guys are coming, man. Exactly. They must be like, look, the bodybuilders are in. Yeah. Let's give them the terrible sheets. Yeah. So <laughs> actually now I'll pack my own sheets and make sure that I'm not destroying what? anything because I don't want to be getting the fines for destroying the... the, the you can get a fine. Yeah. The, the, so say if a competition's got a host hotel... They might put in the in the rules sometimes, like people who do do that, they will get fined. We are learning today. Yeah. Here's me just thinking you're being a nice guy, exactly. but you're just avoiding the exactly. fine. Exactly. So any That's natural bodybuilder, well, bodybuilders in general, if you're getting a tan, pack your bed sheets. Oh, number one tip. Number one tip today. <laughs> pack your own bed sheets. In athletics, it's pack your own pillow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bodybuilding, pack your own bed sheets. Love it. So, all right. You tanned up. You're prepped. You've had your honey. You got your tan. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in terms of your category, how many people will be competing in, you know, quite a large event where you can get a pro card? Yeah, so it can change. Um, I think there was 19 in my category at Worlds last year when I won my pro card. Some of the British finals I've done, they've been up to 30 people in a class. So are you looking for like any sign of weakness in others? Let's be real, because obviously when you're competing, you can't help but look who's around you now. Everyone always would say to me, stay in your own lane think about going forward but look if someone's in front of me i'm taking note of that if someone's behind me i'm taking note where i am if i can tell that you know sometimes i look for weakness in others you know you can there's a head game uh, there's a head game happening you know someone might come up to you say may the best man win and you're thinking well actually you know there's a chink in your armor why aren't you thinking you're the best man so are there moments like that i'd like to sit here and just say i'm focused on myself but to be honest, you will have a little glance round. Yeah. And for example, if someone's got shoulders like yours, oh, right, man. I'm yeah. going to make sure I'm getting a good pump on my shoulders. So you do have to have a little look around and just, yeah, have a little comparison and think, right, what do I need to pump up before I go on stage? So take me back to when you won your pro card, yeah. Was yeah. there anyone else that day that was close to beating you in that position? Yeah, so I'd actually done the British show a few weeks before and someone had flown over from Spain to do that show. Uh, he actually came third and I came first, but I did feel it was a lot closer than what the scorecards probably said. So he was in my category then at Worlds as the Spanish champion that he won before that. And yeah, I was a bit worried about him, to be honest. So you have to be on your A game all the time. Look over your shoulder. So when you're getting your pump on in between, you know, going up on stage, because what, you up twice? Yeah, so it can be different in different shows, but generally you'll go on for a pre-judging and then go back on for the finals and the results. Do you get to do, get a pump on in between those two performances? Yeah, so you'll get enough time to pump up twice and make yeah. sure that everything's on point. And your routine per se, right? Let's just, let's just talk about this, because I don't feel like people actually understand... 
Like we see people, you know, pose in a mirror, you know, Instagram is Instagram. You'll take note of people with their pants around their ankles in the gym, pull their shorts right up, might be wearing Y fronts and they're posing, right? But that's hard. Yeah. It, like, I tried it once and I started cramping in yeah. places I didn't know I could cramp. <laughs> I was myself, what's going on? So how do you get conditioned to pose and how are you regulating your routine? So I just practice it year round, whether I'm off season or prep or close to the show, I'll just keep working on it. Because like I said, I came from a football background, right? You won't go into a football match without training. Well, the only thing I need to do on stage is pose. So what's of the utmost importance is to making sure that my posing is on point. So just regular practice year round. Have there been any embarrassing moments like you've nearly passed out? Um, not passing out, <laughs> luckily. I have had a very dry mouth and struggled to smile at times, but yeah. that's as bad as it goes. Because that's the thing, you've got to fake it at the same time as tensing, right? Because exactly. you're not really happy. You're not really <laughs> that smiley, are you? Like, let's be real. You, like, you could potentially put your pants any second, right? Exactly. And what I say to people all the time, especially now I'm getting more into coaching, is even if it is a fake smile, just, just do it because you're going to look more confident with your teeth showing than if you're not smiling. And since I've seen you host a few events, yep. you know, I've seen you on the mic. So would you consider judging at a certain point yourself? I would, but I really enjoyed being on the mic on the stage. You yeah. know? So I feel like if I'm enjoying this, I, I want more of that. You want to stay yeah, there. Yeah. And being a judge in that position, how being a competitor, like something that I couldn't necessarily do is do a sport where someone judges me and I give my all and it's their opinion that changes my position. Yeah. Because obviously I do a sport where cross the line, if I finish first, that's it. Yeah. Done. If I finish second, I'm second. Um, you know, how much trust are you putting into these guys? A lot, of course. But what I've come to learn is there's a lot of mental strength that goes behind that because like you say, naturally as an athlete, I feel like we love to be in control, right? Massively. And I'm not in <laughs> control of their opinion. So be because of that, I've just learned to just have a trust in what is meant to be will be. Be in the moment on stage and let's see what happens. So have there been any scandals? Judge? I've had a, I'll have yeah. be very honest on this because yeah. in the last few years, I've had a lot of success winning multiple times. Before that, not so much so. And I'd say it's worked both ways for me. I've had results where I've looked at it and thought, I've got a bit of a gift there. <laughs> yeah. but it's a smile. It's yeah, a smile. but I've also had it where I feel like I should have been placed better. So yeah. it works both ways sometimes, to be oh, honest. Mate. To be, no, I appreciate the honesty because that's obviously why we're here to talk. We're being honest. I think off the, uh, there's this one video I remember seeing online and it was this guy who had been, I think first place had been stolen from him. And he, was, he was foreign and he just wouldn't leave the stage. And I often think of moments like that similarity to athletics when John Drummond wouldn't leave the track because he didn't full start. All that hard work that you put into in that moment taken away from you in terms of what would be a bad decision or something that, I don't know, just out of your control. So across the board, look, everyone appreciates the judges, but I've heard that some of the judges could be coaching people that, is that, that has happened in a lot of competitions but definitely now like in the WNBF going to the worlds and stuff like that there's different federations and I feel like it's being monitored a lot better now because they get a bad rap when that does happen so you also coach right yeah do you coach specifically bodybuilding in that pers perspective or is it also across the board in just functionality of life and fundamentals? yeah so I have like people who just want to lose a bit of weight and or put on a little bit of muscle but then I do have a strong passion for coaching those that do want to get on stage because I'm at a point now I really want to give back to people. So the experience I've been through, the things I've learned along the way, the emotions I've got to feel on stage, I want to give that to other people now. So would there be a point potentially where you could be coaching someone that you're competing against? No, probably not. Um, because I think by the time my guys are moving up to the pro ranks, yeah. I might be retired by that point. <laughs> so what's a retirement age for bodybuilding would you say well the current world champion in men's physique uh pro world champion he's like 39 and he's still going so i feel it's very person dependent right so you can keep progressing for me personally i don't see myself competing in my 40s you know it's feet up time by then and that's what we're talking about so let's talk about the value of living life right let's talk about the fact that for me personally, I find that life is all about some nice form of balance. You know, I'm, I'm dedicated, I'm committed to the ultimate goal of success and I enjoy success. However, there has to be a balance to it because I, equally I've got a life that I want to live. Now, the highs and lows that you experience when you're on prep, when you're bulking, when you're doing this, when, what's the highest peaks and what's the worst? What's, what's the highest highs and the lowest lows? Well, the highest highs has been the winning on stage. The lowest lows at times 
during prep, it can be a very lonely place. Yeah. You know, you're so focused on this goal. Not everyone's going to understand it. Yeah. Um, not everyone's done what you've done. Not everyone's achieved the things that you're aiming to achieve. So the amount of people that can fully understand it can be can be low. But at the same time, you appreciate all the support you can get, but it can be a lonely place. So that yeah. can end up being the low points, I guess. So do you align yourself more with people within that same sport to kind of fundamentally get an idea that you're all in the same place? Kind of, yeah. I uh, do like to mix with those people, so you know. you can all talk about your rice and fish cakes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, can, we can talk about it passionately and uh, understand it. But um, but then I feel it's good to mix with like athletes from other sports and mm. stuff and, and feel their energy for what they do because that can be inspiring in itself as yeah. well. So yeah, it's good to get a mixture. I'm an anomaly, to be fair. Like when we have our USN link up days, everyone expects me to be a type of way, and I'm definitely the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one pulling out the packs of Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely not on the uh, prep meal plan that everyone <laughs> else is on. But look, so if you were to think about where you are, let's say talking to your younger self, yeah. What advice would you give to your younger self right now? Because if we're talking about balance and how you're going to balance out, you know, you've got your social aspects and. So often I would say to my younger self, like, look, kid, don't worry. You're on the right path type thing. Is that is that something you would say to your younger self? Or what advice would you give to your Absolutely. younger self? Absolutely. You've hit the nail on the head straight away yeah. there. Because my younger self, I was probably impatient. You don't realize how long it takes to achieve some things that you want to achieve. You want success overnight. It takes time. And if I could speak to my younger self, it would be to just trust myself and to trust in the timing of things happening for me, like when they're meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just keep doing the right thing day after day. Whereas my younger self would get a bit more anxious, a bit more impatient. Were, so, were you really like that Was you, as a younger Yeah, you, Yeah, you, you want everything like in your early 20s when yeah. it might take a bit longer than that. So what, what would you say didn't work for you as a young athlete? Well, obviously I was playing football back then and mm. I had a bad knee injury and I thought it was the end of the world, right? Mm. So... That put me to a low place when I had that injury because I thought I had to be successful in something, like I say, at that age. Um, what that I ended up being, because I got more and more into the gym, I've had more success through bodybuilding, was actually a blessing in disguise. Massively. So if I go back to my original point of trusting in your own personal timing, well, if I'd have known that at that age, yeah. I wouldn't have got so disheartened by that injury yeah. because it was actually a blessing in disguise. And do you think that's taught you a lot about yourself through going through those periods of time of some form of stress? feeling anxious, not knowing what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. Because when it becomes a belief that things will work out for you, maybe not exactly when you want it, but over the long run, when the challenging times do come, it gives you the resilience to keep going. Mm. Because you know within yourself, right, if I keep going, this is going to work out. Maybe not now, maybe in a year, maybe two years, but you've just got to stick to those basics yeah. and keep going. Mate, you got me feeling pumped. <laughs> Ready to go, man. Let's go do something. Let's train. We're in my gym. Let's just train. Man. Let's get it in. So like, we're talking about the past. We're talking about balance. How, what does, you know, your future sort of look like right now? What's, what's the plan? What we, what we doing? Where are we going? So I'm preparing for my pr first pro show now. So I'm literally coming up to 13 weeks out from that. So the diet starts to become more and more strict. So my goals are set around that for my first pro show and then my first pro worlds. And then we'll see how, how that goes. How does it feel goes. saying that? It feels amazing because it was years in the making. Like I say, it's took a long time to get to that level that I want to be at. So now I'm just trying to soak it up and live in the moment and make sure I fully enjoy the process of leading into those shows as well. So goals wise in those moments, what, you know, we've got realistic goals. Yeah. We've got dreaming goals. Yeah. What, what, what are they? So for me personally, what I've learned over the years is just set your goals high because if you, if you feel like you can handle anything thrown at you, like you become a lot more confident in yourself and it's like, right, I'm going to that world's I want to aim to win because <laughs> I, I feel like whatever the outcome is, we, like we've spoke about, it's not in my control what the outcome is. That's up to the judges, but I can control how much I put into this prep. Yeah. And if I put everything into it and on the day I don't get what I want, okay, well now my challenge is to deal with that outcome, right? That. So I'm getting a challenge either way. So yeah. that excites me. No, that's what we're about. So in terms of having that actual perspective of, you know, you know, sky's the limit, right? What happens when there is some form of disappointment? You know, I, I'm exactly like you. I'm so much more 
the need to achieve as opposed to the need to avoid failure, right? I want to be able to go out there and do everything I can. I tend to always try and find a silver lining within those moments. But then sometimes you have to remind yourself that there is a silver lining. Is that something that you would say that kind of relates to yourself? Definitely. And I think with dealing with disappointment, the way I break it down in my head now is who's the person I want to be, right? So it's not always about the goal. Like, who do I want to be as a person? Now, if I want to be the person that can take a disappointment and continue to work harder, then that will stand me in good stead in life. So you have to revert back to who yeah. you want to be, how you want to be in the public eye. And, you know, in these situations, you're not always going to get your no, own I'm way. I'm here for it, man. I'm here for that. Because I often think to myself, sometimes you need the worst to happen. Because what you ultimately come to understand is you're still alive. It's still good. Exactly. You've still got an opportunity to do things that you need to do in the way that you need to do it. So being in that position where your back's up against the wall and you fail or you're disappointed, look around you and take note of the fact that I've still got another opportunity to be great and, you know, just prepare for success because it's going to come your way. There's more than enough success to go around. Yeah. And that's what I really, really like to hear from yourself. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm pumped, mate. I'm pumped, ready <laughs> to go. And it's, and it's not the kush that I'm drinking yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> that helps. But I think the key word there is opportunity. Yeah. So let's say I do a competition. I come second, for example. Um, well, now I've got an opportunity. Where have I been beaten what can I improve on? So there's my opportunity. My opportunity is to go back to the gym and improve something and become better. Mm. So whatever the outcome, the opportunity is there. You just have to seek it and, and follow that, follow and that path. Look, you've got your pro card. Opportunities are out there, limitless, right? So give people a little bit more understanding of once you are a pro card. Now you said there's prize money at hand. Yeah. Is, that, is, it, is it something that's life-changing? Is it something that you can do quite frequently and often? Is there a circuit around it? To be honest, there's not a lot of money in natural bodybuilding. And that is something that I would like to see grow over the years. Is, Come on, is, people, bring yeah. the cash, bring the cash. <laughs> <laughs> and just the profile of the sport as a yeah. whole, because then that will, in turn will make people want to chase that natural path. Yeah. But so the money's definitely not life changing. But like I say, it gives opportunities. And I also feel that this pro card now gives me the opportunity to give back to people and encourage people, inspire people that want to take that same path. So it might not be about, about the financial reward, but the reward for me is to mm. give back to others and use my knowledge and my um, path that I've been on to help those other people. Damn it. So I didn't know that. So you're bringing light to my mind about what these sort of parameters are in place. So choosing to be a natural bodybuilder, you're actually making the choice to cap yourself in one instance, but obviously there's a other aspect where you feel like you're growing and there's much more growth. Right? Yeah, exactly that. It, it, it becomes a lifestyle and it serves you in ways away from the stage yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if now we're talking about, we've gone through your past, gone through your present, talking about balance, right? If you're talking about the mindset and, you know, how do I put this? We, we live in a world where obviously mental health is quite a big factor. Yeah. A lot of people within the bodybuilding world might, you know, struggle with certain things or they've come from a place where they struggle with something. Is there sort of quite a, a similar alignment amongst the majority where the, the, the control around the diet is too much of a factor as opposed to, you know, feeling in a good place with it? I feel like it's person dependent and everyone's going to go through their own journey. And I've been to that place, not through bodybuilding itself, where I've been in the lows and I've had to focus on my mental health and stuff like that. And that, that has led me on a good path long term. I focus on it a lot now, doing different things, you know, to make sure that I stay mentally in a good place. Um, but yeah, I feel like the diet aspect is very, very person dependent. Mm, and from the mental health perspective, how do you, how do you deal with, like you said, you've been to certain places what does that look like? And then how do you get yourself out of it? So for me personally, like I say, I ended up in a low position years ago. And then this lifestyle helped me with that, right? Because mm. it's the small wins that you can focus on daily. Now, yeah. if I've got a lifestyle that makes me sleep at night, makes me want to go train the next day, you know, get the feel good endorphins going, focus on my diet so I'm eating the right foods. I feel like all of that's going to stand me in good stead from a mental standpoint, those small daily wins. So let me interrupt you there. I did promise you a little something special. And here it is, a little discount code for you, powered by USN. We've got to do it big. So type in this code, Harry's Gym David. And I've got a little surprise for you there. Go type it in, see what happens. But let's take things back. For me personally, I always make a point of 
going to bed, before I go to bed even, I'm sat there and I go, you know, have I smiled enough today? I say this quite frequently because, you know, a day's to be enjoyed. The fact that we we won the literal race to be born against, you know, quite a few other little sperms. <laughs> <laughs> we won that race, right? So, you know, the chances of being born is like one trillion to one. So every day should be celebrated. And I think within that, you know, I do sort of have my own little mantra. Is there anything that David says to himself quite frequently? Very similar, to be honest. Yeah. So I have a journal, I write in there each day, and it's just to keep me on that same track, embrace and enjoy each mm. day. I'll say enjoy each day. Some days are going to be worse than others, but there's always a little bit of joy in each one, right? And if you can mindfully take the time to just focus on that, you're going to keep yourself in more of a positive yeah. place. So I love that you do that as well. I mean, like, look, a happy athlete is, tends to be a successful athlete. Yeah. Because, you know, there are a fair few. I remember a footballer, I think he was called Esu Okoto, played left back at Tottenham. Yeah. He hated playing football. Yeah. But look, I'm getting paid P, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm getting paid the money, so I'm going to support my family. But, you know, the majority of people and athletes that excel tend to be the ones that just make a point of enjoying what they're doing or making the best out of the situation they're in, right? Exactly that. And that's where I look at other sports and I become inspired, right? Because... I'll use Cristiano Ronaldo as an example. Fellow Soon. Man United fan, <laughs> right? So we're going to go there. Come on. You have to have a passion, a deep, deep passion for what you do to keep doing what he's doing throughout the years for such a long period of time. He's earning all the money in the world, right? Mm. He's got all the money. He could stop. He could stop playing. But no, he wants to still continually get better. Mm. And I think it is. It comes down to being grateful for the position that you're in. So sometimes I think the term that we forget to use is being obsessed. Yeah. You've got to be a little bit obsessed with what you do and yeah. the way that you do it. It's okay to be a little bit obsessed. It's okay to be a little bit selfish. Yeah. Um, are there any tips on that basis that you would sort of pass on to anyone in within that motion of achieving some form of greatness? I think exactly that. You know, you have to have that deep passion and just be a little bit obsessed by it to the point where if you know what you want to achieve, just focus solely on that, right? Because there's always going to be judgments from other people, whether they're positive or negative. But if you want something bad, just fully apply yourself for it. And along that journey as well, you're going to learn so much about yourself and the character that you've got, like we said before, that's going to stand you in good stead in other areas of your life. So look, like this isn't a personal question for you, but the general scene of bodybuilding, right? Now, when you're a little bit obsessed with what you're doing and you're doing it to the fullest that you need to, like you said, you're 13 weeks out from prep. Um, you know, you're cutting down on your calories and whatever else. The diet's changing a little bit. What happens with your social life? Look, I want to go out for a drink. I want to go out for a beer. I want to go out for something. Or someone wants to take you on a little date. They want to go to cinema, get some popcorn. Yeah, okay. what, what's that looking like? So I'll be honest, that's where the balance goes out the window a little bit. Um, but what I will say about that is I feel that balance is person dependent. Mm. So... Some people might have that balance year round, right? For me personally, if I'm on a competition prep, I'm on a competition prep. But outside of that time, especially this past uh, six months gone in my off season, I like to travel. So I get my balance across the year because I know that come prep time, it's time to knuckle down. And those who are close to me, they understand that as well. Yeah, yeah that, that winning circle, that, yeah, that yeah, ethos exactly. of the winning circle. Because like yeah. obviously your support in that aspect, what, what does your winning circle look like? Who's, who's in there? Who does what? How do they help you? Friends and family, you know, but I'm a bit stubborn as well. I like to do everything myself. So I don't need like people doing stuff for me as such. I like to cook my own meals, you know. I like to, you know, train on my own sometimes. But then I have a odd like friend here and there who will train with me. But yeah, I do like to do things for myself. So what, what, what does your favorite meals and your worst meals look like? In the diet or outside Both. of prep? Both. Okay, so during the diet... I'll be honest, I love my oats and whey, you know? <laughs> and with the USM Flavor? whey, it's, oh, it changes. Yeah? Because there's so many good ones, right? So I love the caramel popcorn. Are you having um? Are you having your oats cold? Nah. Yeah? They're gotta, nice and warm. They've got to be yeah? boiled, okay. yeah. Get so you're that, not overnighting it? Nah, nah. <laughs> nice and hot, get that caramel popcorn whey in there. Yeah. And then I might switch it up from time to time, go to the raspberry ripple, you know? Raspberry ripple's me. I, I'm, I'm a yeah, raspberry okay. ripple so guy, there yeah. there we go. Contrasting flavours, but both great. Then outside of prep, a, a nice burger and chips. Yeah? Yeah. Nice are we, are we talking burger. like, you know, a couple stacks? Are we talking like, 
you know, medium? What, what are we going? What are we going down that watch direction? Luckily, I won my pro card in LA. So oh. I could go straight to In and Out. In and Out. And you've got the four by fours, you've got everything oh. going on, you've got the loaded fries. So, yeah, you're going Mate, for the lot. I, I, I got to experience In and Out for the first time because I normally would only travel to the East Coast. And um, yeah, being able to, there was just one in Texas. I managed to find one in Texas and I picked out, man. Yeah. It was so enjoyable. And it's so simple. So simple. It's just simple, but quality <laughs> ingredients taste great. It was good. And, I, and the fries were airy as well. Yeah. I, I actually get a bit obsessed with food sometimes because when you pick up a burger and there's just a nice amount of weight to it, you yeah. know what I mean? And the warmth, yeah. and then you bite into it. And you, you just do spend that little your time dance. looking at it. You know? <laughs> I actually did a vlog on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it. I've vlogged my I've experience. Anything in and out burger. Yeah. yeah, I'm watching that. All right, so look. If we're talking about food, right? I'm coming round. Yep. Come dine with me. Yep. Starter, main, dessert. You want me to cook it? What are you cooking? I'm terrible at cooking. <laughs> I did a full day of eating video for my YouTube yesterday. Yeah. And people can see how basic my cooking skills are. <laughs> so we've got chicken in the air fryer. Yeah. We've got the rice in the microwave. <laughs> I'm not the best at cooking. So it's going to be something real basic, oh, I'm afraid. Oh, mate. Okay. We, we, so, I'll take you out for Yeah, dinner. you're taking me out. All right, cool. So flip it then. If you could choose... You know, your perfect dinner. Talking about starter, main, yep. dessert. What is it? Ooh. Right. Starter. So we know you can't cook now. So Stop. we know you can't cook. So I'm not cooking this, yeah. right? Starter's got to be basic. Mm? What are we going for? Seafood? A... No. Bit I'm going real basic. Yeah? I love a Nando's pitter and hummus. <laughs> that, that warm pitter's nice. Yeah. I can't lie, the warm pitter goes deep. You don't want it to ruin the main. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't fill you up too much. Yeah. It gets you ready. And then I'm going to go back to the in and out point. Mm. For my main, I'm so basic. Get me a nice cheesy burger. Yeah. And some nice Bacon fries. in there? Nah, I'm not a bacon simple. guy. I'm just very, very Cheeseburger. simple. Cheeseburger. Four by four though. Four by four, lots yeah. of beef, lots of cheese. Dessert. Dessert. That's a tough one because it changes, but I'm probably going to go for a nice, warm brownie. I knew you were going to say something chocolate. I'm going to go ice cream with it. I yeah? Think. What kind of ice cream? Basic, again. Yeah? That's just vanilla. The best vanilla <laughs> the best. with the chocolate. A little bit of gelato. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got that little, little nice creamy aspect Pistachio's to it. Pistachio's good, though, when you it like comes to ice cream. Man's coming out with little, yeah. different, little, uh, little, yeah, little different ones there. A bit more creative now, but no. yeah, let's go with that. And that's the thing, like, I find food is such a good way to get to know people. Yeah. Because like you said, your simple aspect <laughs> of, do you know what I mean? Clean, cut, yeah. give me what I like, and that's all I want. But you're independent with it. Yeah. And I, I often find myself, sometimes I get a little bit too passionate. I get too passionate uh, okay. about food. Because I, I think you can only eat so many times in a day. Yeah. yeah? I, that's how I live anyway. You know, I'm only really going to have like three meals okay. and they're all going to be different types of meals. Yep. So therefore, when I have a meal, I want it to bang. Yeah. yeah. And it, it needs to, you need to come correct. If you're cooking for me, you need to come correct. Because, well, I've, I've failed yeah, on that one yeah, already. So I'm not coming to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> but within that, it's sort of like, that's how I kind of foresee how we train and how we live. You know, that training session, you need to optimize it yep. as best as you can because you can't really come back to the session later on and be like, oh, I'm going to do it better later on. Do you have many sessions where you're like, this is my go-to sesh. These are the ones that I need to show out or, you know, if I is a make or break sort of session for me. Yeah, I try and get myself in that mindset pretty much every session, to mm. be honest. Especially now going into my first pro season, you know, it's like Damn. I want to get the most out of this. Yeah. So every session's going to matter. And let's be honest, we don't feel 100% motivated all the time. No. But go back to the point we said originally about being so grateful for the position we're in. Well, if I'm that grateful for it, and I'm going to continue to work hard for it. Yeah, you're going to turn up. So in terms of that mindset of being, you know, grateful for where we are, grateful for what we're doing, you know, showing up for those sessions, what's your favourite session and worst session? Favourite sessions, push, chest, shoulders, you yeah. know. Is that, is, that your, is that your actual normal split in terms yes. of how you split your... Yeah, so I do yeah. push, pull, legs. Mm -hmm. um, so push being the favourite, of course, you know, you get to see the pump in the mirror and all the rest. Yeah. 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 Pump, pump. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I flex my pecs yeah. if you were listening. <laughs> and I'll say the worst is legs, but I'm not saying that from a standpoint that I don't enjoy training legs, yeah. but... I mean, with men's physique, we've got the board shorts on anyway. Mm, mm. So it's harder to get yourself in that mindset. Are you doing all the calf raises in. you can? Oh, I try, but they're still not growing. <laughs> Calves are mad, <laughs> isn't yeah. it? Um, so when you are on your bulk, in terms of getting in as much food as possible, you know, I was just talking passionately about, you know, I only get to eat so many times yeah, in a okay. day. Is there a point where you're just sick of food? Um, sometimes, yeah. but I'll spread it across six meals across mm. the day. 
And that's where the supplements can come in. So the mass gainers and stuff like that, you want to be choosing foods that are real high in calories, but you know, they're a bit more calorie dense, so they're easier to get. Some in. of them shakes that got like 2K calories in them. Exactly it. that. So <laughs> it makes it a lot easier to get those so calories what's, what's in. What's like your your the most amount of calories you've ever had to get in? To be honest, I'm not the, the biggest guy in the world, so it's never been crazy high looking above 3,000 calories a day mm. when I'm looking to bulk, and then it might go down to around 2,000 as well as upping the amount of expenditure and training I'm doing when I'm cutting. Yeah, so what's what's the least that you'd ever be on, obviously, when you just said that you're cutting, but yeah. is there anything that, you know, in the last week or so that is ridiculously low? Not really, and again, it's person dependent, but I feel like if you've had a good off season and kept your food in an all right place, you shouldn't need to be crash dieting at any point. If you're prepping nice and slow and consistent, come the end of the diet, it's still not crazy low. I mean, for some people it might be, but I'm never cutting carbs completely or anything. Oh, that makes sense. But look, we've spoken a lot about, you know, the sport that you perform in, spoke a lot about what goes in and around it. Let's talk about you. Okay. Oh, David, Man United <laughs> fan. Yes. How are you feeling about the season ahead? I'm feeling good. Yeah. Ten Hag started well last season. There was yeah. not so much expectation on them because no one really knew what to expect. And obviously they had a terrible start right at the beginning. But yeah, he seems to have got to grips with things and made some good signing. So I'm excited for it. And I could tell the patch because look, like you said, you're a goalkeeper when you're younger. I wanted to be Peter Schmeichel. Right? Yeah. But <laughs> you got unfortunately, it didn't happen. And now I stand on stage with my top off. So. Yeah, you needed to eat more bacon for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, is it fair to say football's one of your passions then? Definitely. And that can, when we go back to balance, that is something that I can do during a prep. You know, yeah. I can go watch a football game because it doesn't involve eating. It doesn't involve drinking. So... Football is something now, as I used to be serious about it growing up, but playing, now it's a bit of a switch off time for me. You know, I can just chill and watch some football. Is, is it actually that? that It's quite stressful watching football. Yeah, though. if it's United, <laughs> exactly. I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> so look, if that's the case, what other passions does David have? Uh, outside of football and bodybuilding, not too much, but I do like to you know go to the cinema, watch all the latest films, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Anything yeah. that involves chilling. Keep it simple. And like I say, traveling. Yeah, I love traveling. To travel. All right, top three destinations go. Well, I've been Vegas a few times and I'm already looking at going back after Worlds to celebrate what, this year. What's good about Vegas? The food. It's got an in and out burger for <laughs> a start. And I feel like with Vegas, it's got a bit of a, not a myth, because obviously the gambling's big out there, but I'll say to people, oh, do you want to come to Vegas? And they're like, well, I'm not into gambling. The last thing I want to do when I'm in Vegas is be in a casino gambling. You know, it's got the best of food. You know, I'm not really a party goer, but if you're into that, it's got the best of that. If you want to go shopping, it's got the best of shopping. You know, this, the weather's great. Love that. But yeah, so. Second destination. Second. I was born in New Zealand, funnily enough. I didn't so know I, that. I, I, I'm going to throw New Zealand in there because yeah. it, it, it's home away from home yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And then I need, I need somewhere different for the third. I'm going to go... Been to Bali. And yeah. I like Bali. That's chilled. Yeah. So I'm going to go Bali. Yeah. I enjoy Bali. Yeah. Bali Bali's a big vibe for me because, like you said, it can be chilled, it yeah. can be party, it can yeah, be whatever exactly. you want. That was decent. Okay. Where would you, if you, if we talk about top destinations and top this and top that, let's talk about fears. Okay. Three fears could be anything. Yeah. Okay. One of my fears is drowning. <laughs> I'm claustrophobic. I'm terrible at swimming. Yeah. I can't <laughs> swim for anything. I can't swim for shit, mate. I'm so bad. That's both of us. <laughs> Complete that. We're learning, from, we're learning about each yeah, other. Yeah, no, literally, this. I can sit on the bottom of a pool. So if you've got three fears, what are they? First one, I'm going deep, right? I don't want to be on my deathbed with regrets that I live life to the full. Deep. Well, we so love I'm it. I'm going straight in with that one. Deep. Uh... I can't have City winning more league titles than United. <laughs> that is a big fear. And, and more champions. They've won league. the treble. That was so they painful. So that was so I'm painful. Going that on the but then one. the worst has happened. Yeah, okay. United are still going to thrive. Yeah. You know, we yeah. were the first to do it. Yeah. It's okay. But someone made a great point to me. Man United won the treble with a team that was predominantly homegrown. Yes. Dennis Irwin was our left back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you had the class of 92 come through. So yeah. Man United's treble, I don't care what anyone says, was better than the Yeah, we, did, we didn't buy it. We didn't, we didn't buy, buy, the buy it. We didn't buy the treble. A yeah, little that's bit, fair. but not as much. Not as much. We were, we were a big team back then, obviously. Yeah. You know, that's when I, 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 I got into it. But what I did like about that young team was seeing how many young athletes were able to run the show. Yeah, And that exactly. was quite inspirational for myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, right, third fear. 
Oh, it's another deep one, you know, and this is getting really here, personal. But I'm getting it. older, right? I want kids. <laughs> and I'm scared I'm going to, like, pass my pass my time and not have kids. So Mate, that's a third. As long one. as everything still works, you're good <laughs> yeah. to go. And there's ways around it. So I, I'm natural, so I'm not yeah. going to have any problems there. <laughs> well, there you go. I've not even thought about those issues. <laughs> exactly. There we go. Side effects. Because I did, I have seen a couple of people talk on that basis of... Yeah not performing because yeah. you're taking something else to help people. Like, exactly. If you're not producing enough testosterone, yeah. obviously that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And I mean, we talk about mental health aspects. That's got to be a big blow for some people, Exactly, surely. exactly. Like, as a dude, you're rocking up, you're lifting whatever you want to lift, but and, then going home and not being able to do something and that's again, natural. I'd say from a mental health standpoint, I wouldn't be able to deal with the fact that I've come off something mm. and now I'm regressing. I don't feel as good. Like for me personally in the natural bodybuilding, it's like even if I feel like real tired leading into a show, I'm a couple of In-N-Out burgers away from <laughs> feeling good again. And that's it. Hey, In-N-Out, if you're listening, <laughs> my guy out here needs a little <laughs> hookup. When he goes to Vegas next year, he needs to sort my boy out, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, USN should make an In-N-Out flavoured exactly. way. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going for? Well, they should get the In-N-Out milkshakes, maybe. Yeah, and look yeah. At that. yeah. that could be part of the branding, yeah, right? Exactly, branding. I'm coming up with ideas here. <laughs> We're here, sorting you out. But look, so when you're really thinking about where you've been, upon reflection, are you are you a happy individual? You know, happiness is obviously what some people you know, try to achieve. That's what yeah. I think I'm trying to achieve. And if not, what is, what does happiness look like for you? For so, David? Yeah, so the answer to that question is, yeah, I'm in a very happy place now. But I don't feel like that's come literally as a result of some standalone thing changing in my life as such. It's come through learning through the hard times to be more grateful, to seek the positive, you know? And that in turn has helped me become more happy. And what I've also come to learn is we talk about happiness as this thing like walking around with a big smile on my face. Well, happy moments are just, I feel, that when we're fully engaged in something, whether it's the process of a show, whether we're sitting watching a film and it's like taking us by surprise, they're the happy moments for me. Oh, mate, you've actually got me so gassed. And I think, you know what? I've just got to summarise it there. Do you know what? It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having um, me on. It's another podcast, Harry's Gym. We're out here rocking it. And David, you've been an absolute gent. Thank you, mate.